AQA, A level physics, turning points. Uh, video number five, electromagnetic waves. Let's do it. So now an electromagnetic wave is comprises of uh, an oscillating electric field and an oscillating magnetic field at right angles to it. Now you can get an oscillating electric field uh, in between like two metal plates. If you put an AC supply across the plates, then maybe the electric field at any point in between, because it would be a uniform field, would be that way, and then it would be that way, and then it would be that way. And at any point, if you plotted the strength of the field, it would be like this graph here, sinusoidal, an oscillating electric field. Now, similarly, if you have a piece of wire with a current through, going through it, uh, an AC supply, so the current is going backwards and forwards, then that produces a magnetic field, uh, looking at this circular magnetic field here. And at, at any particular point, let's say at that point there, uh, the magnetic field will be going that way, and then it will be going that way, and then it will be going that way. And if you plotted uh, against time, the, the field strength, it would look like this graph here, an oscillating magnetic field. Now, the thing about an electromagnetic wave is that uh, once you've actually created the wave, uh, it is self-sustaining. In other words, the, the oscillating electric field produces the magnetic field. The oscillating magnetic field produces the electric field. They, they travel through space as a disturbance, as a wobble in the, the fields of space, and they sustain each other. Either one of them couldn't exist on its own. They need each other. And this electric field and this magnetic field oscillating, traveling through space, and different types of wave just have different frequencies. And that is what an electromagnetic wave is. It's an oscillating electric field and an oscillating magnetic field at right angles to it, traveling as a disturbance through space in a vacuum at the speed of light. This bloke here, James Clark Maxwell, and he did more than anybody else to help us to understand electromagnetic waves. He showed that your electrical and your magnetic forces were actually the same thing looked at in a different way. Yes, we talk about the electromagnetic force as one of the fundamental forces. If you do physics at a higher level, you will definitely come across Maxwell's equations, very, very important in physics to do with electromagnetic waves. Now, uh, hopefully you remember epsilon naught. Epsilon naught is the permittivity of free space. And it is basically how well an electric field passes through a vacuum. So permittivity is all to do with electric fields. Permeability is all to do with magnetic fields. The permeability of free space, mu naught, is how well a magnetic field passes through a vacuum. So you've got your permittivity electric field constant, you've got your magnetic field constant, and James Clerk Maxwell showed that you could use both of those to work out a value for the speed of electromagnetic radiation. So you've got the numbers there, do it for yourself. You might be asked to do it in an exam, and hopefully you'll get something like three times 10 to the eight meters per second. Heinrich Hertz. Now, uh, he used Maxwell's equations and he predicted that, well, Maxwell's equa equations predicted that an accelerating charge would produce an electromagnetic wave, something like a spark. A spark, there's the, the, the charges, the electrons, etc., accelerate, they speed up very quickly. And uh, Hertz produced radio waves. He was the first person to produce radio waves and to detect them. He produced them using a spark transmitter. And then about a meter away, he had this dipole aerial thing, this loop antenna, and he managed to get little sparks in the gap. OK, so he produced radio waves and he detected them. What he also managed to do 
uh, in a later experiment, he managed to produce standing waves by reflecting the radio waves off a metal sheet. He got standing waves uh, and that enabled him to measure the wavelength. Uh, he knew what the frequency was and that so he could he got a value for the speed of the waves, which agreed with Maxwell. OK, obviously. Somebody else who measured the speed of electromagnetic waves was this French bloke, Hippolyte Fizeau, and he measured the speed of light. Now, how did he measure the speed of light? Well, looking at the diagram. So you've got a light source, a bright light source, uh, and that shines through. Now, this rotating wheel, look at this wheel is spinning around very, very fast, and it's got lots of slots in it. Now, the, the light goes through one of the slots, and then it travels 8.6 kilometers and it bounces off a mirror and then it comes back again. And if the wheel is rotating at just the right speed, then the time it takes for the wheel to rotate one slot is the time it takes for the light to get there and back. So if you know the distance, if you know how fast the wheel is rotating, you can work out the speed of light. Yes. So there's some data. Do it yourself. Work out what value does that give for the speed of light? Do it yourself. You might be asked to do it in the exam and hopefully you will get. Remember, by the way, that it's there and back. A good answer for the speed of light.